Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down Google Cloud Run's pricing by month. So I've been using Google Cloud Run to host my apps for years. I even use it to host this site for about $1 a month. Now, one recurring annoyance I found is trying to make sense of the Google Cloud Run pricing page. It seems almost intentionally confusing by putting a bunch of a la carte prices in per second, per resource, and depending on tiers combinations, that makes it very hard to see how much you'd actually be paying for something. So I finally did the math to convert Google Cloud Run prices into monthly sums so that it's easier to see how much you'd actually pay and to compare that price against similar service offerings. How Google Cloud Run pricing works. Cloud Run is a managed container service, often called a platform as a service in the industry at large, that runs your code in a container on a server managed by Google. You then pay for the server resources used while running your container. Now you can configure a bunch of things about how Cloud Run runs your container, including the size and amount of servers that run, as well as when these servers should be spun up. So think horizontal, vertical, and then when should these things actually be scaled this way? Now, in particular, there are two CPU allocation types you can configure, which tells Cloud Run when to run your code on servers. So the first version is always allocated. And so this means that a server is always running your code. And this is more similar to like having a VPS or using Google Cloud Engine where the code is just always on, on the server. So it's running the whole time. Now what's interesting about Cloud Run and why a lot of people use it, including me, is it has a sec second option called On Demand, which basically means that a server is only running your code when a request comes in. So this is really great for small apps, but as we'll see, it does have some trade-offs. Now, all of this feeds into pricing. And at the end of the month, all of the server resources you use are tallied up and billed to you. And with that kind of shared understanding of how Cloud Run works and some of the options we have, we can actually go into the Google Cloud Run pricing. And so Google Cloud Run prices depend on several things, primarily the Cloud Run allocation types, which we talked about earlier, showing when these things should be scaled up and how the size of the server that you've configured to run your code on. So this is usually in terms of um, virtual CPUs and the memory or RAM that's running on the machine. And the last one is where your server is running. There's actually regional price tiers and based on the tier that your region is in, that the server is being spun up in, the prices actually fluctuate quite a lot. So this is important. Now in this section, I'm gonna pull out some key pricing information from the Cloud Run pricing page here that we'll use later. This will make it easier to see where these numbers are coming from that I'm using to um, do these calculations and serve as a snapshot in case these prices change in the future. And so here I've taken a screenshot of um, the pricing in tier one and you can see that it's all, you know, by second per resource and so, you know, to actually get the monthly price, you'd have to do a lot of calculations to put these all together. Um, and so lots of numbers on here, but I pulled out the ones that we're actually gonna be using. And so tier one for always allocated, we got CPU and memory here and on demand, we've got it here. And one key thing to point out is that um, always allocated is cheaper per second than on demand. And we'll see that later. And then we've gotten tier two pricing here. Um, and another thing to call out is that tier two is more expensive than tier one. And you can find the full region to pricing tier list on the Cloud Run pricing page. I think this is specific to Cloud Run because these kind of pricing tiers do exist for other products, but they don't seem to be a one-to-one -one match for tiers. So I would recommend checking out the Cloud Run pricing page to understand the tier specifically for Cloud Run. Um, and the last thing to call out is that while always allocated is cheaper than on-demand per second, you can imagine that if you have very small apps that don't get many requests and so they get to go to sleep a lot, it might still be cheaper for your workload if it's small and light like that um, to go on demand because you're running less seconds overall. But this is something you'll have to kind of calculate for your own workload. All right, with that understanding, let's get into the Google Cloud Run pricing per month. So here we're gonna crunch the numbers to get monthly Cloud Run prices. We are going to make some assumptions to simplify a few things to make this calculation easier to understand and more realistic for most use cases. So here's a few of the assumptions we're gonna be making. So first we're gonna assume the free tier doesn't exist. Um, this is because you're gonna exceed the free tier with a simple app anyway. And so any future services you build, anything beyond your first app um, is going to be full price. And so for most people who are doing these numbers, they're gonna have multiple apps. And so this is a better representation of what a real app costs on Cloud Run. The second is we're gonna assume requests and transfer payloads are free. Um, 
And this is just because this is hard to calculate. Um, there's so many different variables. And so we're trying to just set this as a constant. And so the way to deal with this, I think, is to just assume that the price I'm going to show you is the baseline price, but it will probably cost more than that if you have a, a ton of requests. And the final thing we're going to assume is that you're using the server for the full month. And so this is just easier for us to actually compare the prices um, by bumping them up to monthly. And this is also more similar to how other services show their pricing. And therefore, it's just going to be way easier for comparisons this way. Um, for what a month is, we're assuming it's 2.6 million seconds, which is about 30.5 days um, to give you a better average of what this would be like on a month, you know, with 30 days to 31 days kind of thing. So I'll scroll down here. And basically, we've, what we've got is I, I built a spreadsheet um, and I, I just put in all the numbers. I put in um, some basic configurations here. You can do more configurations than these, but for smaller projects, um, this is going to be basically what you're running with. Um, and this is a set of configurations that basically match up um, most other alternatives. Like if you're thinking about going Relay or Railway or Hetzner or Linode or DigitalOcean, like any of those smaller alternatives, this is basically the standard offerings. Um, and so again, this I think makes it easier to compare across uh, this way. And so here, um, I've basically broken it down. So we've got Google Cloud Run for always on here, Google Cloud Run for on demand here, and these are the tier one prices. And then we've got Google Cloud Run always here and on demand here for the tier two prices. And so we can see that basically for the smallest thing you can reasonably run, which is like a one vCPU and a half um, gigabyte of RAM, GC is going to cost you about 50 to $65, depending on if you're always on or if you're on demand. This scales pretty linearly until you get to like the biggest one you can under like a standard kind of instance, if you will, um, up to like $115 or $150 for on demand. Um, and so I think, you know, one takeaway we can take away here is like on demand, you need to be very careful because if you ever get to the point where you're running your server basically most of the month, um, it's probably going to be worth dropping down to the always on um, because you're saving a good, you know, 20 to 30% here. The other thing to call out is tier two can get quite a bit more expensive than tier one. We see that the range is now, you know, 60 to 90 uh, for always to on demand for the smallest we could imagine. And then it goes to 137 to 211. And so I would also recommend like if you can definitely try for one of the tier ones. Um, it seems like there's a region in basically every continent that is tier one. So unless you have like, I don't know, legal reasons or something to be in tier two, it seems like you should probably shoot for, for tier one. Now, honestly, doing the math and seeing the pricing results rolled up by month was pretty surprising. I personally never paid that much for Cloud Run hosting because my side projects tend to be small with low traffic, so are mostly covered by the free tier. And in fact, for my site, which gets the most traffic, you know, I'm paying about $1 a month, about $10 over the full year, but I actually run about six to 10 other side projects all on Cloud Run. And those basically cost me nothing um, because they get such low requests. But it seems if you get enough traffic to require an always on server, the pricing dynamic changes quite a bit, especially compared to some of these smaller players out there, like the ones that are just renting you a, a VPS per month. Some of those can be as cheap as like $5 a month, um, which is way better than, you know, the 50 we saw, which is basically the, the bottom tier that you can you can get on Cloud Run. Now, if you like this post, you might also like the Hammy Burger, my 2023 tech stack, where I kind of break down all my favorite technologies in each layer of the stack and kind of why I choose those over, over the other alternatives. You might also like why I'm moving from Svelte Kit to F Sharp. I recently lifted and shifted um, basically all my projects from using Svelte Kit front end to just doing server-side rendered F Sharp. I um, had a good time doing it, and so I break that down here. And then finally, you might be interested in Stop Wasting Your Time on bad startup ideas, which is just some heuristics and strategies to use to kind of not dig yourself a hole where it's just not really worth it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.